Welcome to a new video. Today we're talking about Sony's new flagship camera, the Sony Alpha 1. Wow, what a name. This name sets a statement. And it makes me not wanting to get the Sony A7S III, but this one. It's more expensive than an A7S III for sure. The Sony Alpha 1 costs a whopping $6,500. Like, this is much. You could get an entry level cinema body for this amount of cash, but wait until you hear the features it has to offer. First up, the most important thing for me and for this channel, because everything's filmmaking related here, we have 8K video at 30 FPS. Let that sink in. That's a resolution of 7680 by 4320 pixels. Still gotta learn that number. I got all aspect ratios in my mind, but this one is new to me. We have 4K at 120 FPS and at 60 FPS with a full sensor readout. 120 FPS gives you a slow motion playback at up to 5 times. We also have 10 bit 422 chroma subsampling and real time IAF and real time tracking for movies. The, I don't know how to pronounce it, Bions XR, Bion Z XR engine features significantly improved detection that accurately tracks human eyes at a wider range of head angles and it's also available in 8K and 4K 120 FPS. Of course we have S-Log2 and S-Log3. S-Log3 provides smooth 10-bit gradations and a dynamic range of 15 plus stops. This is crazy. What if you want to get even more out of your Sony Alpha 1? Slap a monitor slash recorder on it and you get a 16-bit RAW output via HDMI. Also the RAW output via HDMI is available while recording 4K to internal card media. We have a digital audio interface for outstanding audio quality and we also have a new heat dissipating structure for extended recording which allows you to record 8K 30p or 4K 60p video continuously for up to 30 minutes. Gotta say goodbye to the R5. Apparently we got the same as Cinetone color matrix from the Venice and FX6. It features an active mode for image stabilization, which is dedicated to movie shooting and makes 5x's optical image stabilization highly effective for handheld shooting. This uses the, again, Bion Z XR engine's real-time processing capability and works in all formats, including 4K. Now when it comes to photos, the Alpha 1 is an absolute beast of a camera as well. We have a back-illuminated 50.1 megapixel sensor that shoots at 30 fps. Of course, you'll need very fast cards for it to process but damn you get a high resolution and sensitivity with low noise plus up to 15 stops of dynamic range the standard ISO range is 100 to 32,000 but expandable to 50 to 102,400 also the EVF is updated at 240 FPS to minimize the latency during continuous shooting you have a silent vibration free anti-distortion flicker free shutter and the new I don't know how to pronounce it, provides 8 times faster processing power. We have advanced flash features for flash sync up to 140th of a second. Also we get, as always, the 5-axis optical in-body stabilization as said earlier. And the real-time IAF that works on flying birds. This is just crazy. Also real-time tracking and wide, fast, precise AF tracking. Okay, this was just repeated. More new cool features. The Sony Alpha 1 now has separate settings for still and movies, a new menu structure for easier navigation, 17 custom keys where you can assign 164 functions as well as front and rear dials, touch menu controls, a high reliability mechanical shutter, two CF Express Type A compatible media slots, a high capacity Z series battery for extended recording, which allows you to shoot up to 500 30 FPS per charge, an improved dust and moisture resistant design and a durable magnesium alloy chassis and it also has a 1000 base T Ethernet connection and much more. With Imaging Edge TM you can easily use the Sony Alpha 1 as a high quality webcam, just flexing a little bit with your 8K zoom calls these days. One last great thing, at least in my opinion, is that the Sony Alpha 1 logo is golden, not silver like on the A7S, A7R or just A7 series, no, it's golden. I want it. And that's it from this quick video about the new Sony Alpha 1. All these informations were directly from the Sony website, however, I'll link a few blog posts down below in case you want to get some more infos or opinions on the camera. What do you think about this camera? Are you going to get one? Feel free to tell me down below in the comments and also it would be very nice if you leave a like if you enjoyed this video and also consider subscribing for more filmmaking related content just like this video and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!